So hello again guys, back with another one for you. So today I'm going to show you a twist on my original Arch Linux install video. If you haven't seen it already, I'll put a link at the pop-up banner up at the top so you can go and check that out. What we're going to do different this time is we're going to use ButterFS for the file system. And we're also going to enroll system measurements into our TPM2 module, which will allow us to automatically unlock our encrypted partition as well. We'll also create unified kernel images, just like last time, and we'll use SVCTL to create secure boot keys. So hopefully by the time we're done, we'll have a very Gucci base install, ready for you to go off and install any desktop environment of your choosing. I've written a blog post on my website, uh, the link's in the description, and uh, it's got all the commands you need in there and a brief write-up as well, so you can go check that out as well. Right, so that's just enough waffle, let's get started. As per usual, I'm going to be doing this inside a VM, but the commands are completely transferable to bare metal. If you'd like to test this out in a VM for yourself before you commit to installing it for real, just make sure in your VM you've added an emulated TPM module, which is down here, and also make sure that your firmware is set to UFE mode. Okay, let's begin the installation. First thing we need to do is to go into the BIOS UFE setup page and put secure boot into setup mode. that a bit bigger. So to put the uh, secure boot into setup mode, you need to go into your secure boot settings and just reset secure boot keys. And let's boot from the Arch ISO. Okay, so now that the Arch ISO is booted up, I'm just going to set a root password so I can SSH into the uh, Arch ISO environment. Lock the address, 241. Okay, so now we're at the uh, Arch ISO screen through SSH. So first thing we need to do is to get the uh, name of the hard drive. In my case, it's VDA, so that'll be dev VDA. If you look on the commands, first thing to do is to zap the hard drive. That means we're going to just clear out any existing partitions and anything which used to be on the hard drive. Okay, and it's created a blank GPT table for us. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our partitions. This is creating a 512 megabyte EFI system partition at, at the start of the disk, and then it's going to use the rest of the disk for a Linux root partition. Okay, I'm sure that worked. Yeah, that looks good. Let's set up our encryption. So we're gonna run crypt setup, looks format, type looks to, and we'll do our uh, root partition. Strong and complicated password. I can get it right. Better. Okay, now let's open up an encrypted partition. Okay, now let's open. We need to format the file systems. So for the EFI system partition, that needs to be VFAT 32. And then we're going to use ButterFS for the root partition. Okay, let's mount our drives. And let's create our sub volumes in ButterFS. It's gonna copy and paste this one. Okay, so that's our sub volumes created. Now we just need to update the Pac Man mirrors. Take a few moments. Okay, they're updated. Let's patch strap in our base system. I'm just going to add OpenSSH as well 
so I can SSH back into it after we reboot. So take a few minutes, so I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, and that's our base system patch strapped. So first thing we need to do now is update our locale settings. So first thing we'll edit is the uh, locale.gen file. And let's see locale.gen. And we're just going to uncomment our locale of choice, which for me will be n underscore gb utf 8. Control O to save, control X to come out. And we're going to use systemd first boot to set up the rest of the uh, settings. My QMAP is UK, my time zone is Europe, London, and the host name I'll just put Arch VM. Okay, that's done. Let's uh, generate the locale. Okay, that's complete. Next thing we need to do, add our user. So this is going to, the dash G, dash big G, is the group, so we're going to add it to the wheel group. Dash small m creates the uh, home uh, folders for the user, and then the uh, last line is the username. We can ignore that. Set the password. Okay, and now we need to add the wheel group to the sudoers file. We're just going to come down to the bottom and I'm commenting this uh, wheel group here. In my case, it was already uncommented, so that's fine. Okay, next thing we need to do is create our unified kernel images. So first of all, we need to create a kernel command line. This doesn't need to have anything inside it. We just do it so MKUnit CPIO doesn't complain. Okay, next let's create the EFI folder structure. And now we need to change the uh, hooks in mkinitcpio.conf. And we need to change these to systemd hooks. In my case, it's already been done, but this would usually be udev, so you change udev to systemd, and then you change, uh, it would usually keymap and console font, you change that to sdv console. And then you'd add SD dash encrypt. Save them out. And the next thing we need to do is to edit the preset file. So we're going to do, first of all, uncomment all underscore config. Then we're going to comment out default underscore image. Uncomment default underscore UKI. Uncomment default underscore options. Comment out fallback underscore image. Uncomment fallback underscore UKI. And then that should be fine. Control O to save, Control X to come out. And let's regenerate our, or generate our unified kernel images. Okay, let's check they were generated successfully. They look, it looks like it was. And yeah, there we go. There's our two unified kernel images, our main one and then the fallback. So next thing we need to do now is to uh, enable our startup services. I'm also gonna add open SSH to this. This is just so I can, uh, sorry, SSHD this it's just so i can use ssh for the video and we just need to mask off systemd network d because we're going to use network manager instead and then we need to install our bootloader okay that should be it done let's reboot and make sure it worked
looks good. Let's just SSH back onto it. Okay, let's uh, make sure that skill boots in setup mode. And it is setup mode enabled. So what we need to do now is to create our secure boot keys. And then we're going to roll them into our UFB. We're using the, the dash M that uh, adds the Microsoft vendor key. Uh, if you're sure that none of your hardware has been signed by the Microsoft vendor key, you can leave this out, but it's usually safer just to leave the Microsoft key there. Okay, so the, so the next thing that we need to do is get SBCTL to sign our bootloader and our unified kernel images. We're going to use the dash S option, so it saves it to a, a database, and that way if these files ever get uh, recreated by Pac-Man updating them, it will resign them automatically. Okay, so that's all our, uh, the files that we need signed. Let's just make sure it resigns them if we update the kernel. And then you can see SBCTL has re-signed our new unified kernel images. So we need to reboot now to just, just to make sure it works. And that looks good to me. So SBCTL is installed. It's no longer in setup mode and secure boot is now enabled. Okay, so now for the finishing touch, we're gonna to set up TPM2 unlocking. How this works is we'll take two measurements, one of the firmware state and one of the secure boot state. These are PCR0 and PCR7, and we're gonna roll them into our TPM. On boot, if they remain the same, then the hard drive will get unlocked. If they have changed, it will fail and we'll need to enter either our recovery key or our password. So first of all, let's uh, generate a recovery key. You really wanna keep this safe and hidden as well, so don't lose this. If you ever lose this and something changes, you will get locked out and you'll have to start again, basically. Your hard drive will be toast. Okay, that's the recovery key there. And we wanna copy that, copy it somewhere safe. Okay, next thing to do is to enroll our PCRs into the TPM. So what this does, if that's any TPM2 device we have, it wipes any existing uh, PCRs inside it, and it enrolls PCRs 0 plus 7 onto our encrypted partition. Okay. The only thing to do now is to test it, and hopefully this should not now not prompt this for our encryption password. It should just automatically unlock it. Fingers crossed. And it's worked. Okay, so there we have it. So now you can just go ahead and install whatever desktop environment that you want. I'm just going to throw uh, XFCE4 on very quickly. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. Uh, give it a try. If I went too fast or if you're confused by any of the commands, please check out my blog post. There'll be a link in the description. And uh, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.